Hey, what is going on my friends and welcome back to another video on the channel. Well, many of you have been suggesting to me that I start to talk about some of these newer projects that have recently popped up. There's a whole bunch of them that people are super duper excited about and what I wanted to do is go ahead and I will talk about them on my channel. But what I do want to say before we even get this new wave of some of these new projects started on my channel, these projects that are new are the most risky of the most risky things that you can put your money into in the entirety of the crypto market. If you go into a trade or you invest money into one of these projects that's just starting to gain in popularity and just starting to gain momentum and just starting to see that first big rise, go into it understanding and accepting that you might lose every single dollar that you put in immediately in an instant and there's nothing you can do about it. If the amount of money that you're investing into it, if that was to happen and it's going to change your life or it's going to hurt you so emotionally or dramatically that it is absolutely just completely detrimental to your life, don't do it. OK, so with that being said, I just have to put that out there because what we've seen recently from so many of these different projects is that there are scams. There are rug pulls. There are these big major events that we think are going to go well that just don't. OK, and so I don't think enough YouTubers are making it clear enough that this is risky. This is truly risky. So go. Going forward, as I do introduce some of these new projects, I'm not going to say to buy it. I'm not going to say not to buy it. I'm not going to say anything. You guys are looking for information on these different projects, and I'm going to provide you with that information and give my opinion on it. You should not be basing your investments off of these videos. That is not smart, and that is not what a good investor does, so don't do it. But with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's jump into it. I just had to get that out there as it's super duper important. So with that being said, what are we talking about today? So we're going to be talking about Spore Finance. And this is actually one of the more cool projects that I've seen recently. I will say that they do have their own vibe, their own aura. And I think it's super duper interesting just to see how they've approached everything. You know, we've been getting so dragged out with the whole safe Mars or safe Jupiter, safe Saturn, safe Pluto or moon token. Like, I, I don't think anything's wrong with those. But I just do believe as they're starting to kind of copy the name or copy the vibe or copy the same aura of safe moon that it just gets kind of dragged out and it kind of gets boring right but sport finance is an interesting one i mean as we can see here like these are some super cool designs that they have i mean look at this like i would have something like that on my wall so i will give them a a, a, a for for um creativity and uniqueness for sure so what do exactly do they do? Well, Spore Finance aims to create an ecosystem combining Reflect tokens, algorithmically generated NFTs, and next-gen NFT prediction markets. So what I will say is that we've been seeing this a lot recently, and it's not necessarily anything bad, or it's not wrong that they have it. It's just not necessarily too exciting. You know, we've been seeing a lot of these NFT um, NFT projects come around that use the Reflection tokenomics. And so with that, as we have been seeing a lot of people do it, it automatically throws a little bit of caution into the air like hey like is there some copycatting going on here are you doing this because safe moon has seen so much success or are you it was this a part of your project way before all this launch you know but at the end of the day it's all speculation now one thing that i will say also that they do get an a for uh, creativity or uniqueness on is the fact that they have a next gen nft prediction market which is something we have seen grow in popularity in recent days and i'm super excited to see how they're going to approach that and how they exactly they're going to market it and what the true functionality and how it will work will be so that's something that's definitely interesting and that's something that i think sets them apart from a lot of the other new projects and so that's definitely something to keep an eye on for sure now when it comes to their price their price is currently sitting at nine zeros 33 so i mean this thing is really 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 low on every transaction, 3% of rewards are burnt and 3% are redistributed to holders. Now, on the BSE transactions, 6% of rewards are burnt. So it is interesting to see how they've taken kind of the 3%, 3% approach as we have seen 5%, 5% from some like SafeMoon. So again, I think that's interesting to see that they're not trying to copycat SafeMoon exactly. Yeah, they're using Reflect tokens, but SafeMoon wasn't the first ones to use Reflect tokens, right? So the fact that they are kind of taking their own approach to it, I definitely do like that um, whenever it comes to sport finance. Now, again, that's not me saying that this is a good investment or that you should put money into them, but I'm just saying that I think that it does provide some uniqueness and some creativity that could definitely go a long way. So whenever it comes to just some of the numbers and some of the analytics around Spore Finance, their total liquidity is about 255000 a little bit over a quarter million, which isn't the most amount and it's not the least amount, but it's definitely serves like you should be careful 
if you do decide to go ahead and get in on Spore Finance because a lacking of liquidity can always lead to some transactional issues. And so that's definitely something to pay attention to. Now, I have seen that their volume has been decreasing down to about 1.1 million over the last 24 hours, but that is to be expected as we have kind of seen that, that fall somewhat or, or that rise slow down a little bit. And then of course, less people are going to be having FOMO and then they won't be necessarily getting in. So the transactions are currently sitting at about 1,200. And so, I mean, that's, that's still a decent amount. Of course, it's not the absolute most but you can see that the price is so low that people are buying loads and loads and loads of it so overall again i do believe that it's a super interesting project you know something that you have to pay attention to with these different projects is that they consistently do the same thing over and over again right they'll go live there's the rise then it falls then they go up a little bit then it falls and they go up fall up fall then we'll see like a double top and then we're like "Ooh, is this the moment where it falls and then sometimes it'll go up and sometimes it'll go down right and then it'll continue to rise and then once it has that first big rise that's when we see it start to gain popularity now the thing about it is you can never know when the big rise is the big rise you know what i mean and that's why i say it's gambling because the thing about this is spore finance could very easily drop all the way back down and lose all of the gains it's made over the last 24 hours or this could be the setup for the big rise where this thing just goes all the way up here, right? And then we're looking back on it like, yo, imagine if we bought it when we first saw it, you know? So with that being said, you always have to be careful and understand it's a gamble. If you're going to put money into this thing right now, you can very easily four or five X your money or very easily lose 80% of everything that you just put into it. It's really a gamble whenever they're this early on. And I think the majority of us do accept that and understand that when we put money into it at this early of a stage, we're not really betting that it's the best long-term investment for the most part we're betting that it is going to increase in price as more developments come out and we get a true understanding of what they're capable of right that's the difference between a trade and an investment in my opinion so let's go ahead we can jump over to their twitter we can kind of just get an idea of what exactly they've been doing one thing that i will say about them is they do have a very strong online presence which is great they don't have the most followers right now, but they have, they're coming up on about 5,000 followers, which is, I mean, a decent amount. Of course, it's not like hundreds and hundreds of thousands like we've seen, but that does show that there is still room to grow when it comes to popularity, especially as people like me or other, um, you know, influencers or anything like that do start to pay attention to see, hey, what is sport finance all about? Because at the end of the day, that's all we do, right? I know there's some YouTubers who try to pump them and they tell people, go buy it right now. That's not what I do. I'm just trying to be the messenger. You guys want to know about sport finance, so I'm going to give you the information you're looking for, but I ain't going to tell you what to do. it. if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. If you think it's too much of a risk, it probably is, right? So with that being said, we can kind of see that they have been doing a great job of, you know, providing people with information. And that's what we always do like to see, especially from new projects. Whenever they're super duper open, they're working with people like Crypto Screen and they're doing giveaways, things like that do bring interaction. And I think it does build a great community. And I like whenever we see, look how cool that is. See, this is what I mean. Like, I, man, this is sick. But um, whenever it comes to like building up a community, I I think that's the most important thing that sport finance can do right now is continue to do these little giveaways continue to do all of these little interactional events with all of their followers and their holders because that provides people with not only confidence but it provides them with the feeling of communion and i think that's super important whenever it comes to maybe if we see a big dip that people through that feeling of communion may not exactly sell because they have faith in the community in which they're in. So with that being said, I, I will say that they are doing a great job at a few different things. I think it's, they're doing a great job of being creative and unique. I think they're doing a great job of being unique in the sense that they are also adding some things like NFT prediction markets. They're doing a great job of promoting themselves and you know branding themselves on Twitter and starting to grow that following. But at the end of the day, of course, it is always a super major gamble whenever they are this early on because we truly don't know all of the information. There's there's still a lot of info that's going to be released or that needs to be released before we can clearly say, oh, this is going to be successful. This is going to, you know, 100x or anything like that. It's way too early on. And the majority of these projects that I will talk about that are so new will likely be way too early on. So definitely do your research. Let me know what you guys think about it. I think it's very interesting. I'm not going to lie. I think it's super cool. I'll follow them on Twitter just so I can see all these cool pictures and stuff. Who knows? I might put that as like my background or something. That's super duper sick. So with that being said, of course, I will keep an eye on it. I'll see what happens. And if anything big happens, that kind of changes my opinion and you guys do like the company i will always go ahead and update you all you guys know the drill but i will continue going forward to put major major warnings and red flags everywhere because there are major risks that are associated with this and you should not be basing your investments off these videos so with that being said that is about it for today's video and i hope you guys did enjoy i had a great time talking about them I have a great time researching them again i think they're super duper cool and i'm excited to see where it will go in the future i currently don't own any sport finance and at the moment i'm not going to buy any you know, I could say I'll just put 50 bucks or 10 bucks in and see what happens. 
But realistically, um, I'd rather just put my money somewhere that I think it's a little bit more secure. And so at the moment, again, I don't have any Spore Finance, but who knows, if that does change in the future, I will let you guys know. But at the end of the day, that is going to be about it. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video, and if you did, of course, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel if you are new. If you also do want access to all of this information super duper early, if you want access to every trade I make in my trade portfolios, go down to the link in the description. It'll bring you over to my Patreon, and that's where I'm fully transparent with all that information. I will see you guys very, very soon. Y'all have a good day. Peace out.